Wow. Isn't this beautiful? I think my favorite part of this is that we're all here together. The idea that we could take an idea as simple as cradle to cradle, which doesn't look at things having a life cycle, like a product, and talk about products and end of life. Because if we talk about the end of life, and we design for end of life, we might actually achieve it. So we talk about design for next use. Look at the difference. Design for end of life. Design for next use. Design is the first signal of human intention. If I intend for end of life, perhaps I can achieve it. So we are all designers here. And I think the question is, how do we make the world better? Because we're here, I don't know how many of you wake up in the morning thinking, how can I make the world worse? So why is it that we're so focused on being less bad? This is a problem because we all talk about being less unsafe, less unhealthy, less unjust, less polluted, and it dr driven by economy. We seem to have forgotten our values while we seek value. What if we could think of a world that was more good and be explicit, a delightfully diverse, safe, healthy, and just world with clean air, soil, water, power, economically, equitably, ecologically, and thanks to you, elegantly enjoyed. A positive goal. Now, I come from the world of architecture. I'm an architect. And in 1989, I won a competition in Frankfurt for a daycare center. And I wanted it to be operated by the children. So it had shutters in the skylights. The children could operate with cranks to heat and cool themselves. Turn on the sun, turn off the sun, open the windows, close the windows, do things. And the German engineers were arguing, you can't have a building operated by children. Why not? I think we should all design for 10-year-olds. That's our immortality. We can have children. So if we don't design for next generations, we're just forever young, and we're waiting for Armageddon. We're waiting for the world to end in an instant. We perpetuate generations. So the idea that children could operate a building, the teachers finally convinced the engineers that it was OK. And they said, you don't understand. Our biggest problem in a daycare center is finding things for the children to do. <laughs> How about wake up the building in the morning, put the building to bed at night? But while they were having this argument, I was looking at this little girl, and she was eating the building. <laughs> and I was thinking, what is she eating? The children had their mouths on everything. So I thought, I need an ecotoxicologist. I need to worry about what's in that table. I need to know, worry about what's in the paint, what's in the fabrics. So I hooked up with Michael Braungart, who is a chemist. And we started to look at the idea that being less bad is not being good. See, it's by definition. Bad and good are platonic ideals, right, wrong, beautiful, true, human. Less and more are Aristotelian numbers. Less, more, science, all important. But being less bad is not being good by definition, because by definition, you're being bad, just less so. So less bad is not two negatives multiplied into a positive. And so all of our charts on our corporate social responsibility reports look like this. And they say, oh, we're bad. We'll be less bad. Our goal is zero. Really? Your goal is nothing? Tell your children your goal is nothing. And they're making it difficult for you because you have to feed and clothe them. And you're trying to be nothing. It's a sad story. And, and if we talk about just reducing our badness by 20% by 2020, toxic reductions, carbon reductions, you're telling the world what you're not going to do. What we just heard from the minister is what they are going to do be 100% renewably powered. If you just say what you're not going to do, reduce toxins, 25 toxins of concern. Uh, this is like getting into a taxi and telling the driver, quick, I'm not going to the airport. <laughs> we're telling each other what we're not going to do. 
So what if we take the things we don't want and put it below the line and say, good, let's get rid of these bad things we don't want, but why don't we identify the good things we do want? And why can't our goal be 100% fabulous? Why is our goal 0% bad? 100% fabulous, go for it. So we remove the things we don't want, we increase the things we do want, we take an inventory of every molecule in the case of fashion. We put it through an intellectual filter of what's good, what's bad, we assess it with scientists, and then we act. And we act with this form of practical wisdom where we discover the obvious. One thing that Cradle to Cradle brings to the table is this concept of material health and biological and technical nutrients so that things are designed to go back to nature safely or things are designed to go back to industry perpetually for next use. And that we separate these two systems and then we can organize our designs around them. It gets interesting because a consumer product is actually one that can get consumed. But for most people, we're actually customers of technical materials that we want things that work. We want this television. I want to see the screen. I don't need to own the chemicals. And we can see these as products of service. And we can design circular economies where these materials go back and forth in cycles of perpetual benefit. And that idea, which is the second part of Cradle to Cradle, is really critical because we can put the re back into resources. And so now that we, uh, thanks to Wendy Schmidt, who is here, um, Where'd Wendy go? Oh, she must be getting ready. Um, we were able to, to be, uh, start the Cradle to Cradle Products Innovation Institute in uh, San Francisco and give Cradle to Cradle certification to the public as a gift, an independent, third-party, peer-reviewed organization. So Cradle to Cradle products now, certifications, relate to things that are biological nutrients or technical. So they're actually defined for next use, circular economy. But it's really important that the circular economy be seen as a, as a magnificent uh, way to get this organized. And as you see, it's a, it's a very powerful theme. And we're, there are people like Ellen MacArthur, Andrew Morlay is here, uh, who are working on circular economy in ways that are, will astonish you and are delightful prospects for perpetual reuse. And the things, products can cascade through systems. But the nice thing about Cradle to Cradle is first, material health a defined system. Let us do that, because if we don't do that, we could find ourselves recirculating bads, not goods. We call products consumer goods. What if they were actually consumer bads? Would we make those on purpose? Well, if we then recirculate them, we're recirculating bads, is that a good? See? So no, the first step is qualification then quantification. So let's have less bads, more goods. So in Amsterdam now, we've started an initiative funded by the CNA Foundation as a gift to the whole industry. We're very excited about it. And we've taken Cradle to Cradle, and there will be Cradle to Cradle people from the Institute in the building. There will be the Sustainable Apparel Coalition, we're getting a collaboration, we have an incubator, an accelerator. The idea is to allow everyone to come together and take these benefits and put them in this case, the language of a child. That's why I'm doing the five goods, is really cradle to cradle for children. Because what I found with the children is they, they, they discover the obvious a little more quickly than we do sometimes. You can say to them, clean water is good, dirty water is bad. No water is bad. So the good and the bad. So if we, if we take the cradle-to-cradle -cradle hierarchy of materials, economy, energy, water, and lives, which is there developed as a scientific protocol, and then we look at that, we can start to see that good materials have certain characteristics. They are safe, they're healthy for biological and technical systems, and they're safe for ecosystems. A good economy would absolutely be the circular economy, as you'll hear. Magnificent. Take it, use it, reuse it, add it to the benefit of all generations. Develop currency as capital for future generations instead of destroying it. Sharing economy, more use of emptiness, but also a shared economy where more people can benefit. 
when we look at clean energy, clean and renewable. It's exciting that right now, in the Middle East, a 800 megawatt solar farm was just uh, contracted at 2.4 cents a kilowatt hour. The idea that we would have countries that are renewably powered is not crazy. We just heard a minister say it about a country in which you find yourself right now. It is here. Good water, clean and available to everyone. Every single child should have clean water. This is non-negotiable. This is what we do. So we want good lives that are safe, that are creative, and that are dignified. We can do this if we have this intention. So one of the things that Fashion for Good did was allow MBDC and our teams of chemists to work with uh, mills to create a 100% um, Cradle to Cradle certified gold t-shirt and to make the entire process open source and published to everyone to see and benefit from. And so we, we last week announced CNA, the company, had taken this from the, from the not-for-profit gift and one of the first people to put it into effect and it has, has now created a Cradle to Cradle Gold t-shirt. 100% of the molecules of this t-shirt from organic cotton, 100% have been assessed against 24 deep criteria for ecological and human health. It is made with wind power. The only water leaving the factory was evaporation. The people are treated with grace and dignity. It exists, therefore it is possible, and it's mass market and price for it. So the idea of the, of the initiative is that everyone can come together and share information as fast as possible, but also we have incubators, we have the accelerator for companies that need to, to expand to meet the market, and we have uh, people there that are cross-referencing the economic development, the technological development, circular economy, working with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, and so on. So it's time for us all to get together. The time is now. And we're going to change the question of commerce itself from how much can I get for how little I give, mean, limited, greedy, to how much can we give for all that we get, gracious, abundant, sharing. And we're going to move from a, a level of concern of this forever young instant gratification, a kind of timeful mindlessness. I want it now and I don't want to think about it. To timeless mindfulness. Because the fact that our immortality comes from the fact that we can actually have children gives us something to consider. And it's going to take us all and it's going to take forever, but that's the point. Fashion is a verb. Go forth, fashion endlessly. Francis Crick, nine years after discovering DNA, looked at the question of what is a living thing. His conclusion, that is, in order for something to be alive, it needs to have growth. Because if you have more cells dying than growing, you're dying. It needs to have income. Income in nature comes from the sun, the wind. But thirdly, it has to have an open metabolism of chemicals operating for the benefit of the organisms and their reproduction. So fashion. Fashion is a living thing. Thank you.